Hey, I'm Magic, creator of Oracle's Elixir.com. There were several big storylines coming out of the first week of the LCS. A bunch of different rookies had explosive debuts in both North America and Europe. Dignitas made a case for themselves as one of North America's best teams by playing a close series of Cloud9. And I think the most unexpected story was FlyQuest's 2-0 start. Most people, myself included, had ranked FlyQuest at the bottom of the preseason power rankings. I had them in 10th. So were we wrong? Are FlyQuest actually a playoff team? According to a Twitter poll I posted earlier today, 65% of you right now now think that, that FlyQuest are a playoff team and will reach the spring playoffs. So that, that hype is understandable, I think, given how exciting their start was. But I'm here to tell FlyQuest fans you'd better lower your expectations. So I want to start off by talking about some of the arguments in their favor. Why can people, you know, why can we understand that people are on board with FlyQuest being a playoff team? Well, obviously, so they're 2-0 in their first week. They beat Envious uh, 2-0. They beat Team Liquid 2-1. And the Team Liquid one was the more impressive one, really, because Team Liquid is one of these teams that were usually seen as a top five team coming into the season. They've got Rain over, they've got Piglet, some very strong players and a really strong core, and FlyQuest were not expected to beat them. So the fact that they did win really counts in their favor, and they deserve a lot of credit for that. Uh, within the that weekend, High performed very well. He had a plus 9.6 CS difference in 10 minutes, he had a 60% first blood uh, rate, he put out 741 damage per minute, which is really high. Uh, all of these stats are really, really strong, he very much impressed visually, he very much impressed statistically. Uh, and and he, as the leader of that team, as kind of the 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 in-game leader, the the vocal leader, um, kind of the legacy leader of the team, his success speaks a lot in their favor. Uh, and and just in general with FlyQuest, their core players, Balls, High, Lemon Nation, have they all have a legacy of success as a unit, and they've defied the odds in the past. So it's really easy to get on board with this narrative that, hey, you know, they've they've won some games right out the gate. They can keep doing it. They've done it before. You know, we're gonna see it again. But I think there are a lot more arguments against FlyQuest being a playoff team uh, based not only on you know what we knew coming into the season or what we thought we knew coming into the season, but also based on what we saw in that first week uh, and, and how they won those games, why they won those games. So let's first just acknowledge that FlyQuest entered the LCS with a lot more pre-existing synergy than most teams uh, in the league. You could look at someone like TSM and someone like Cloud9. These are teams who, you know, also saw minimal change to their rosters. But, but FlyQuest came in not only with four unchanged players, and they only had to replace their jungler, bringing in Moon because Contracts joined the main Cloud9 team. But not only did they have these four unchanged players, but three of those players have been playing together for literally years. Balls, Moon, and Lemonation, or sorry, Balls High and Lemonation go back, you know, all the way to pre-LCS. Uh, in, in the season three days. So when they have an early start, they're starting from a higher default synergy level and, and coordination level than the, the teams they are coming up against. Uh, Envious, you know, they, they had a relatively unchanged roster overall, but they weren't playing with that roster. They had Alex each substituting in mid, and Ninja was moved from the mid to the jungle. So they were, in effect, playing with, with a real lack of coordination, plus they had the new bot lane, uh, or, or at least the new AD carry. So... Uh, and Team Liquid as well, they had a bunch of changes to their roster with Rainover coming in, uh, bringing Piglet back in, Golden Goo playing. So so the, the default synergy level for FlyQuest is higher. They should be expected to have a little bit of advantage on that side. Uh, in general, the, the question marks about FlyQuest also have consistently been about their individual skill levels, not about their ability to work as a team. We knew that they should be good at that already. But, uh, but just how well they could do kind of one-on-one -on -one in lane matchups and mechanics, these kinds of things. Uh, and... So far, from what we've seen, only High and Moon are the ones who have actually been performing in the early game. So that narrative of weaker individual skill is standing true. Uh, Alltech and Balls have really struggled in lane. Alltech has a, a, a negative 11.6 CS difference in 10 minutes. Uh, Balls is a minus 8.0 CSD at 10 minutes. Uh, they're, you know, they're really looking weak, even though High has these really high numbers, and Moon's early game numbers are pretty good as well. Uh, and... That's you know they haven't re really been against the hardest possible opponents yet either. They've they've had some strong opponents, but but in general their their laning mechanics have been weak as expected. Uh, there's also the fact that that High is the core of their team, and he did have good performances. But High's laning stats and his snowballing starts came against arguably the two weakest mid laners in the NALCS, and one of those was a substitute. 
So facing Alex, Alex Each, you can't give High too much credit for beating him. Facing Golden Glue, well, people have been questioning Golden Glue at least as hard as they've been questioning FlyQuest as a team. Uh, and both Alex Each and Golden Glue made some very big, very visible mistakes uh, throughout their series and were punished for them. Uh, also, when we I mentioned High's damage per minute numbers, those were inflated by playing Corky, who's a, pork cha uh, a poke champion, uh, and, and always puts out high damage numbers. Uh, so, you know, you, you want to be careful what you're reading into some of High's statistics, both because of his opponents and because of his champion pool. So, looking ahead, these are the reasons why I doubt FlyQuest. This doesn't mean they're not going to win any more games. In fact, it doesn't even necessarily mean they're not going to win games next week. Uh, the, the match that we're going to be looking to is CLG as their next test of if they can beat CLG. You know, there's that much more argument in their favor that, that maybe they really are a better team than we thought. Uh, and I think against CLG, FlyQuest will have a chance to win this weekend. Uh, CLG haven't had a great start. They aren't in a meta that favors them. Uh, I think the, the support uh, champion pool right now especially isn't great because it doesn't play mostly to Aphromoo's strengths. Aphromoo is at his best when he's on a playmaker, an initiator, who can like dictate the pace of the game and, uh, and drive the team forward. But he's being put on a lot of these... Uh, you know, the mage champions who have some playmaking tools, but but not the way an Alistar would, uh, for example. And and also who he's best champions, the roaming, you know, heavy roaming champions are, are out of the meta. Uh, you know, we're less likely to see him bring out his Aurelian Soul or his Delia, these kinds of things that, that really uh, accentuate who he strengths. So CLG are adjusting to the meta. They're going to need time. I think we've seen in the past that they are able to to evolve themselves as a team, as a team but it takes time to happen. Uh, and given that this meta doesn't play to their strengths as much as it could, they may never fully reach the you know the heights they did in you know the the hardcore split push meta where where um, Darshan can play a lot of Fiora these kinds of things. Aphromoo can play a lot of Alistar. So uh, these are some reasons that CLG might be vulnerable to FlyQuest beating them. But at the same time, I'd say CLG are still going to be the favorites to win this weekend and uh, and kind of slow FlyQuest momentum. Because uh, Stixie and Aphromoo, as a, as a duo lane, they uh, performed a lot better against both Team Liquid and Envy than Alltech and Lemonation did. So both CLG and FlyQuest played the same opponents in Week 1. Uh, FlyQuest went 2-0, CLG went 1-1. One one. But in general, that, that duo lane was much more impressive, uh, Stixie and Aphromoo standing up better. And given that Stixie is CLG's primary carry, even in a utility ADC meta, I think that's really important for CLG to be able to to win this. They're they're more stable than Piglet and Matt, even if Piglet and Matt have a higher skill ceiling, I'd argue, or at least Piglet versus Stixie. So so I think we should see some very successful bottom lane play from CLG, and that's going to make things more difficult, given that FlyQuest's uh, bottom lane has already been struggling. I also think who he will do better in lane and better just in general than either Alex Each or Golden Glue did. Uh, who he actually had, again, so he played the same opponents as High did in Week 1, and who he had some pretty similar goal difference and experience difference numbers as uh, as High playing against the same opponents. Uh, who his advantages didn't come from direct laning, but they came from what he's always been best at, which is uh, holding up on lane, but then moving out to the side lanes and making plays with his team. So that's how he was able to get himself ahead as well and get his team ahead even more importantly. And in general, I think CLG's biggest strength is their game planning. So they've been able to to scout FlyQuest based on what they did in week one. They know that high was the win condition. High winning lane and punishing uh, opponent mistakes with Moon helping him is what allowed FlyQuest to win those games. CLG are really good at scouting how an opponent works, coming up with a plan to defeat them. This is why they're always better in best of scenarios. Uh, in the playoffs, they've usually done better than in the regular season, uh, lately at least. And And I think that they will be able to have scouted that and, uh, and be able to adapt to, to beat FlyQuest in those ways. So these are some of the reasons that I believe FlyQuest uh, is not a playoff team. I think they are still at the bottom of the standings. I don't know if we'd have them 10th at this point because we haven't actually seen Envious play with their full roster. There are still a lot of question marks floating around there. But, but jumping on the FlyQuest hype train I think is premature. Uh, it's based on not understanding who they won against and how they won. And, and uh, we need to be a little careful about how far we're going to take this narrative. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I hope you enjoy the games this weekend.